Rahul, it's a pleasure to welcome you. Thank you. So in Silicon Valley, it's not often I get the opportunity to talk to somebody from the services, big company like Tech Mahindra. So it's a pleasure to have you again. Um, wanted to ask you, the landscape has changed, uh, not just in the US, but also in other parts of the world where you guys operate. Um, so it will be important to learn, since you are part of the corporate development, how do you maneuver a company like Tech Mahindra and the opportunities that the market present in these tough times? Um, so first is, uh, we've been in uh, states for more than two decades now. Um, uh, we have large presence, right? So in the valley, we have two locations. We have close to 100 plus associates. So we, so we are here. On the services side, uh, I, yes, you're right. I think the services are changing, right? Uh, you know, the traditional application development services, you know, have got disrupted by moving into the cloud. Then uh, you start seeing a lot of automation coming in. Then uh, you start seeing a lot more artificial intelligence coming in, you know, which is essentially adding uh, to some ways some disruption in the services industry, but a lot of opportunities as well. So for example, you know, the way we navigate uh, you know, within the company, you know, we do three things, right? You know, one is we invest in startups, you know, which is minority investments that we do. Uh, you know, we do you know, in the Valley, in London, in Israel, and in India. Uh, these are essentially to benefit our customers, right? Uh, and, and the second thing we do is we incubate in our own company. You know, we have got 120,000 plus employees. There's always something new coming up. There's mm -hmm. always, you know, some of these great ideas. And we have a platform in the company that kind of provides them liberty to kind of talk about their idea. And there's a panel that goes and looks at their ideas and we incubate uh, within, those, uh, within those ideas okay. and create companies on their own. And the third and most important piece is, you know, we are in the last mile of what the customer's needs are from a services standpoint, right? So we kind of know the pulse or understand the pulse of what the customer's needs are. And our strength has always been, you know, from a services standpoint is find the right way to solve the customer problem. Technology plus services, technology, services, you know, whatever the mix may be. So I think being at the forefront of the customers, being in the valley, looking at the technology, incubating within our own company, I think we are able to address and, 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 and maneuver you know, this services industry to kind of become the next generation services. So uh, two good points. One is about um, inorganic acquisition. We talk about reaching out to startups. Um, pretty much every major corporation is doing it. When you look at your vertical and your space, what is it you're looking for from startups? So, so most importantly, you know, the, the reason, we, there is an operational reason why we are investing. When I say operational, it's more strategic reason, right? The reason is how does this startup benefit the customer, of our customer? So that means there are a couple of things that needs to be in place. One is the product need to be production ready. So it can go to the customer much faster. Sure. So we work with the startup, you know, typically in a series A plus stage okay. as, it move, as it moves forward. The second is we also, we also bring uh, what we call the domain expertise, right? If you look at Valley, for example, a lot of technology is core technology. But then once you take it to the customer, once you start productionizing it, you start need to layer it out. Either it's with a domain, it's with the integration expertise. So we kind of build a wrapper around the core products, either it's a domain wrapper, it could be integration wrappers, so when we go to the customers, the customers are not seeing the technology, but they're seeing the benefit from the use case, the business case, on what is getting addressed, right? So I think that's where we see, you know, how, you know, where the startup has to be and how we come in. Okay. The second point was, again, picking from the last one that you mentioned about addressing customer pain points. Right from very concept of the idea of a startup to all the big companies, that is the fundamental thing, to address the pain point of customers. But somewhere there is a differentiation. And I'm trying to learn so that, you know, people who are trying to partner and leverage the opportunity that companies like you provide for startups, since we are in the valley, mm. they get some learnings from you, mm. uh, some fundamentals that you can share in terms of addressing customer pain points correctly. Mm. Well, I think, uh, you know, the way we see it is, uh, it's the business case and the use case first, more than the technology first, okay. right? 
once you have that mindset to begin with, then you are becoming what we call customer centric, right? You're not worried about force fitting your product that you have built to what a customer pain point is. And you're going and, and kind of inverting it and saying, this is the customer pain point, And then let me build a product around that customer pain point and then see, and then bring the benefits that the customer wants, right? That's how I would look at it. Okay, great. Well, you know, it's important because uh, you are uh, at a big company in the right domain, so there's something always to learn from people like you for young startups and entrepreneurs. Appreciate you coming and sharing your thoughts. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much.